Well, Margaret Byfield serves as the executive director of the Americans Stewards for Liberty and is a natural resource policy expert with over 30 years experience. And uh, her education began on the Pine Creek Ranch of Central Nevada, where her family became one of the first Western landowners targeted by radical environmentalists, resulting in a 27-year legal battle, and it's a famous one, Hage versus United States. Today, American, uh, Americans for Liberty confronts policies uh, eroding our constitutional rights, and particularly our Fifth Amendment property rights, and has been implementing strategies to defend these rights at the local, state, and federal level since 1992. So we welcome to the stage Barger Byfield. Take it away. Well, thank you. And let me start by saying it is great to have the Heartland Institute and CFACT as your friends. We did a summit in Lincoln, Nebraska last year on Earth Day, the Stop 30 by 30 Summit, and, and they both were co-sponsors for that event. But what really was, came in handy for us was a week before going in to this event, of course, the environmental press started attacking us, and you know how they do this. They always attack you personally. They never talk about the facts. They don't want to have that discussion, so they attack you personally. Well, they made a very, very bad mistake because they named James Taylor as one of the speakers. And so James, I think within, I'm gonna say four hours time, had his rebuttal written and submitted to the Lincoln Star Journal. And after a couple days of haggling, they did have to publish it. And it was just, it was fabulous. It was so nice to have uh, the heft and the gravitas of James to step in and defend us and what we were doing. And I think when I thanked him, his response was, well, it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> and you know, that really summarizes the environmental perspective on all of this, everything that we're talking about. And that, because that is what their entire arguments are built on sand. Now I'm gonna talk about 30 by 30, but the science behind 30 by 30 is the climate crisis science. So they say we are in a biodiversity crisis. It's the same science. The same science that you guys have all studied. And let me say just up front, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because you have already given us the arguments to help us fight 30 by 30 with the work you're doing. But that's the same science that we're dealing with to say that, that we must permanently protect 30% of the world's land and oceans by 2030. That's what 30 by 30 is. Now, this is an agenda that has been pushed on other continents pretty successfully. Um, and America's a little behind the ball on it. Uh, but the European Union has their program. In Canada, they call it 25 by 25. They're trying to get there by 25. And it's, it's worldwide. This is the agenda that uh, we really, America didn't really have to face until Biden was elected. And let me tell you, one of the first problems, and I think one of the reasons why, uh, the, why it took the Biden administration to get this going in America is because there was a bit of a problem. In America, we're a little different. The people own the land. We, the people, still own 60% of this nation. The federal, state, and local governments and land trusts own the other 40%. So we are closely getting to where we're gonna tip that and why that is so important is because land is power. This is what the Founding Fathers understood when America was settled. We were a nation built on self-rule by we the people. And, and it's more than just a document. It's more than great things on a piece of paper with the, our Constitution and Bill of Rights. How do we protect that? We protect that because the land is owned by the people. That allows us to control the natural resource wealth, therefore limit the government, limit their power, and each of us has the ability to have that independent prosperity. We mix our hands, our labor with the land, and we control our future. There's a reason that Karl Marx defines socialism, the abolishment of private property, because they get it. If they control everything, if they own everything, they can control us. This is what 30 by 30 is about. 
So I'm gonna try and, and rush through this and hopefully we can get some questions in the end if I, if I miss anything that's not clear. I wanna start with this publication, Center for American Progress. You might be familiar with this organization. They're a center, or I'm not a center, they're a progressive left organization. Their entire agenda is to implement socialist policies in America. Now 30 by 30 is a big part of their agenda. And they came out with this report in 2019, how much nature should America keep? This basically, it's not very scientifically deep or anything, there's a lot of citations, but it's still not very scientifically deep. What's important about this publication, it's the playbook. It is them telling environmental groups and policymakers, here's how, how we sell this program in America where there's this particular problem, the people own the land, and we have to get that land. So this is their playbook. So let's start with what do they believe? What do they advocate? So what they say is in the, the coming decades, over a million species are gonna go extinct, and one third of all American species. What is this based on? Models. I don't have to explain to this audience why that's bad science. They say we're losing a football field worth of habitat every 30 seconds in America. That's meant to scare you. They say two thirds of the development that is occurring on, on, that is occurring in America is occurring on private land but only 1% of that land is protected. That's a problem. And only 12% of the total land of the United States is permanently protected at the level that they are seeking to protect 30%. So understand, the federal government owns about 27% of America. They're not talking about ownership, they're talking about level of control. Now, the first thing we looked at, we started looking at this before Biden took office because we watched what the environmentalists were doing, what they were saying, and that's where we learned about 30 by 30. So we really drilled into it. The first question we had is, do we really need to worry about this? And you can tell by the people who are behind it. So we found this resolution that had been filed in the House and the Senate in 2020, and it's the 30 by 30 resolution. And it was only supported by 15 people across the two bodies, so it wasn't even a popular resolution at that. But what, what obviously drew, drew our attention to it is who co-sponsored it. Then Senator Harris, and then Representative Holland. Representative Holland is now the Secretary of the Department of Interior, which controls and, and oversees most of the government-owned land in America, as well as a lot of the laws that impact pri private lands, such as the Endangered Species Act. So we fully expected we were gonna be dealing with 30 by 30. Now 30 by 30 was initiated on January 27th, 2021 in the climate crisis executive order. You guys will know this and remember this. 57 page long executive order. Two paragraphs are devoted to 30 by 30 and if you didn't know what 30 by 30 was, you'd skip over this and get to the really meaty stuff. Um, and what he says is that, that they are going to achieve the goal of conserving at least 30% of our lands and waters by 2030. Now when we read this, of course we knew what it meant because we'd been studying it. But even we want a confirmation that what we knew is 30 by 30 is what they were going to be trying to implement. And we got it. That same day, Department of Interior issued their fact sheet explaining what they would be doing to implement this climate crisis executive order. And the section devoted to 30 by 30, you'll be familiar with the language, they say we're losing a football field worth of habitat every 30 seconds in America. That we're gonna lose a third of the US species if we don't do this. And that only 12% of the land in America is currently permanently protected. So we knew exactly what they were doing. This was 30 by 30 as we had understood. So let's drill down into this, let's get some facts. What is the 12%? They say 12% is permanently protected. Well, this comes from the USGS gap analysis. And they had, the 12% is made up of our national parks, wilderness areas, conservation easements on private lands in perpetuity. That's how they get to the private lands, one of the ways. State parks, national wildlife refuges, national monuments, and some other restricted areas. The definition for what can be conserved, what, what qualifies, is for an area of land or ocean to be, 
counted as protected, it must be permanently protected in natural condition and extractive uses must be limited or prohibited. This is land that we the people don't use. Here's a map. This is where all of that protected land currently is. This is the gap analysis map. The two dark green areas are gap one and gap two. That makes up the 12%. The light green are other lands that are primarily owned by the federal government, but there's multiple uses on it. The, the gray areas are primarily our private property, which they consider unprotected because they don't know what's going on, or I should say, they don't control it yet. It doesn't mean that it's not being taken care of and that it's not well protected. That's actually, um, it is well taken care of. The National Geographic is one of the environmental groups that has been pushing this agenda worldwide. The article they did on getting this instilled in America was published in 2019, and they published this map to scale. The small back box is a 12%, the large box is a 30%, where they want to get. Now, Governor Ricketts, I should say former Governor Ricketts of Nebraska, he's now Senator Ricketts from Nebraska. At the time, he said, this is the equivalent of protecting one state in Nebraska every year for the next nine years, or two states of Texas. It's a lot of land. All right, this is the one that I really like. Uh, all right, so they say, we're losing a football field of habitat every 30 seconds in America. That sounds pretty bad. Well, what does that come to? 3,000 acres a day, 1.1 million acres a year, and 11 million acres in 10 years. All right, let me give you some more numbers. 30% would be roughly 700 million acres of land in America. So they already have 300, 300 million acres. What they need to get in the next seven years is 400 million acres. But the problem, as they define it, at best, if you believe what they say, is 11 million acres. So the question is, why are they seeking to add 400 million acres in nine short years? if the problem is 11 million acres. This is not about conservation. This is about control. Is private land a target? Absolutely. The CAP report goes into this and explains the way we get the private land is we convince landowners we're here to help them. Help working lands become, become better, where the ranchers and farmers can do more to conserve water and land and species. And is 30% the end? Absolutely not. What this group is really pushing is the half-earth philosophy, which you may or may not be familiar with. It was uh, really pioneered by E.O. Wilson, a conservation biologist, who believed that half the earth must be permanently protected in order to save humanity, meaning half the earth does not have us, humans, using the earth. And in America, unfortunately, <laughs> we have a lot of people working towards this half-earth agenda, including the New Mexico governor, who signed an executive order in 2021 to implement 30 by 30 in New Mexico. But not only does it do 30 by 30, it adds 20% for climate stabilization areas. 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 This comes out of really kind of the science piece, if you want to call that, that supports all this. Global deal for nature is really what kind of stands up all of these arguments. And Vermont, the state of Vermont, both the House and the Senate passed a bill to move the conservation of all lands to 50% by 2050. Fortunately, there was a Republican a governor who vetoed that bill. But it shouldn't really surprise us because that is Senator uh, Bernie Sanders' state. So he is, I mean, an admitted socialist, so it shouldn't surprise us too much. But the point is, this is happening in America right today. All right, next good question. Who is running the 30 by 30 program? That tells you a lot. If key people are in place, then we know we need to worry about it. Well, let's start with the co-chair of the 30 by 30 task force is the CEQ chairman, Brenda Mallory. Anybody wanna guess who her chief of staff is? 
His name is Matt Lee Ashley. He's the author of the 30 by 30 report out of, out of CAP, Center for American Progress. He is sitting in the key position to get this implemented. Another key person to watch, after the Inflation Reduction Act was passed in August, Biden appointed John Podesto over all of the national, as, as the head of the National Climate Task Force, which also oversees 30 by 30. And he is the founder of the Center for American Progress. So how is it being implemented today? Let me go over just a few quick things on how they're getting this done. The first is they're using the existing laws to implement this agenda. Key to understand about 30 by 30. In America, there is no congressional or constitutional authority for this agenda. It's done by government fiat. How's my time? Thank you. It's done by government fiat. So they have to use existing laws. And what they're really doing is they're taking our natural resource laws and they're, they're changing the goal. So they have a lot of regulatory power and they're just basically changing the way they use that to get to the 30% goal. They're funding federal land acquisitions. They're really encouraging the enrollment in the conservation programs. They are handing money out to uh, landowners and enticing them to get under the conservation programs like we have never seen before, increasing the price per acre they would feel that they pay to get landowners to set aside acres like in the conservation reserve program for 10 years. They are outpricing and competing with the working landowner as they do this. And the importance of this is it creates, when you attach federal funding to private land, it creates a federal nexus. And there's a number of laws that come into play that give them a, reg a regulatory tool to start restricting that land. That's the danger of it. That's why they're pushing it. Uh, they're granting a ton of money to the NGOs, the land trusts, the Nature Conservancy, uh, Ducks Unlimited. All of the land trusts are basically feeding at the trough right now because the administration is, is giving them tons of money. And their, their job is to go out and get the conservation easements put all over the private property. And wildlife corridors is another good one. Now let me give you an example of how this is being pushed in the West. Uh, after the Inflation Reduction Act was passed, the environmental community launched their campaign for the West on really how they see this playing out. It's called Rewilding the American West. It was first published in bioscience to give it the uh, color of being a scientific position, then picked up by Outside Magazine, and then, of course, uh, pushed by the World Economic Forum. So you know that this is being pushed internationally. Now, what they're planning to do, the agenda, the purpose of this program, and right now it's just the environmental program, it's what they're pushing, is they want to create 11 districts across the federal lands in the West, 5,000 kilometers for each district that's going to be set aside. Uh, where they're not connected, then they want to purchase the private land in between those and get the conservation easements on the private lands where they can to create corridors that go from Canada to Mexico for the wolf and the beaver. So they're going after the land and the water. This is their agenda, and if it looks, if any of you guys have seen the Wildline, Wild, Wildlands Project that came out 30 years ago, this is basically a reincarnation of that philosophy. First that goes in these areas is livestock grazing, then mineral extraction, and then hunting and recreation because they are eliminating all off-road vehicles. Now you look at that map, that's most of the West. Tell me how many people are gonna go in and access that on foot. This is meant to make this part of the world uh, with no humans. The other thing that happened, uh, which we're gonna be seeing a lot more of, is the Bureau of Land Management made the largest purchase of private land acres in the state of Wyoming uh, last year, 35,000 acres. Now here's the kicker. Neither the governor nor the county commissioners knew it was even happening until the press release went out. This is what they can be doing in every community right now, and we wouldn't even know about it. 
All right, I'm gonna step back a little bit. Uh, in the beginning, I told you that this is an international agenda and that this is, they're much further in other countries than ours. Okay. In the, in the European Union, they adopted what's known as Natura 2000. Now, what's interesting is when you compare the language to Natura 2000 to 30 by 30 in America, it's the same thing. It's here to help working landowners do more with their land. But now where we are in Natura 2000, after years of this being implemented, is the Dutch minister has determined that 2,000 to 3,000 landowners are going to have to voluntarily sell their land to the government to free up nitrogen credits because they want to put in wind and solar and that takes nitrogen credits to put that in and agriculture is taking too much of that. So they need the farmers and ranchers to voluntarily sell. And if they don't, then um, she says, it's with pain in my heart uh, that we will have to enter into discussions with a targeted group in which mandatory instruments will be used if necessary. This is what's coming to America with 30 by 30. They're just ahead of us, so we really have to stop it here. One more thing? Okay. I, I want to get to one more thing uh, very quickly. I think it's really important. So in Canada, last December, they signed the 30 by 30 agreement, uh, international agreement uh, for, on 30 by 30. Now, let me just tell you what's in this. We, we knew that this was coming, but, but it's really a very interesting document. First off, it advances the worship of Mother Earth. Mother Earth, I think, is referred to in this document, I think, eight times is how many times I counted it. It's the only religion that is written up to be protected in this document. This is the worship of the creation, not the creator. It says that nature needs to have equal rights with humans. It requires urgent transformative action. And of course, it needs a lot of money to implement this, which is what they've all agreed to. Now, all the, the, the nations that adopted the 1992 uh, Biodiversity Treaty signed this. The United States, the Biden administration was pushing this deal and was behind the scenes, uh, actually in very out front, pushing this, this agreement. However, they didn't sign it. The United States did not sign this. And there's a reason why. Because in 1992, there were some colleagues of ours who were watching the Biodiversity Treaty and were able to expose that what they were really after was the Wildlands Project, the map that came out that showed that the true agenda was to push all the population into core population zones and rewild the rest of North America. And fortunately, these colleagues were able to get, very strategically, to get these maps in the right senator's hands who went to the floor and said, <laughs> This is what they're planning to do. Stop the vote. The treaty was never adopted in America. And therefore, the United States could not sign this treaty. But what you may not know is there were two key people involved in that that got that done for us and has saved us today. One of them was Craig Rucker. So, I guess the point of telling you that is all the work that you're doing today. I know it seems frustrating because you feel like sometimes you're just fighting against, you know, sometimes it feels like you're spitting in the wind. But you don't know how powerful what you're doing today is and how 30 years later you could be saving us from something that could be very bad. Remember truth is a sword. It's piercing. And it can cut through propaganda very, very well. So keep doing what you're doing. Thank you.